All right, we're going to tie a caddis pupa pattern today called the twisted caddis. Um, we've gone ahead and mounted a uh, light wire up by scud hook into the vise. This is a size 14, and we've prepped the hook by adding a uh, tungsten bead to the front. And these are Nymph Head Evolution beads from Flyman Fishing Company. Um, it's a tungsten bead that's been molded into the shape of a caddis head. It's a great new way to spice up your patterns and uh, super effective um, to, to really just take your, your bugs to one step further. Uh, we've jammed some lead wraps into the back of this bead just to, to fill that gap in the back. And then we're just going to put some ADOT thread, this is a dark brown color, through those wraps to kind of make them secure and not, they're not going to move around or anything. The uh, body material for this fly is a fluorescent green antron that we're going to use and tie in right behind those lead wraps. Those lead wraps are also going to help us build a little bit of a taper on this bug to make sure that um, this, this progresses correctly. So we're going to take that antron and we're just going to tie it to the top of the hook right behind those lead wraps, kind of continue that taper down the body, and we're going to take that antron and advance it down and keep it on the bottom side of this hook. That's going to let it wrap a little bit neater. Also wanting to build a smooth underbody so that when we do wrap this there won't be any lumps or bumps throughout. We're going to advance this a little bit down the bend of the hook. Bring our thread back up to the front here. And then this fly gets its name based on the twisted nature that we're going we're gonna to twist this antron to make the body material. And the easiest way to do this is just take some English hackle pliers, clip it to the bottom of this section of antron. That's going to allow us to uh, be able to control this a whole lot better. And then we're just going to twist it with our fingers working our way down that antron to the hackle pliers. And if we just take a little bit of tension off of this, you'll notice that it'll start to curl a little bit. And that's why you know that we have the right amount of twist in it. So we'll go ahead and start advancing this forward. And as we do this, you'll notice it, it provides a real nice segmentation and a real bright fluorescent green color. Now you can also do this in a tan antron. And even in an orange antron for some of those fall cows. So we're going to advance this up and leave a little space for us to finish the fly up at the front and add the, the rest of this, of this bug in the, in the thorax. We'll tie this off on the bottom of the fly, clip this off. And then the thing I like about this antron is you can also mark it with, with permanent markers. Um, if you look at a caddis pupa's natural coloration, you'll notice that it's a little bit darker on the top of the bug than it is on the bottom. So what we'll go ahead and do is take a, a Prismacolor marker. This is a dark brown. And we're just going to color the top of this antron just to make this top section just a little bit darker. It's subtle, but it's effective. So what we'll do is we'll kind of uh, fill that gap in between the lead and where we tied in that antron, keep that taper going a little bit. And we'll tie in our underwing. Our underwing is going to be um, some CDC dyed olive. This is Montana Fly Company's CDC. We'll select a, a nice plume of CDC here. It's going to help uh, trap some air bubbles. And uh, a lot of those leg parts and wing parts that are starting to emerge as this pupa ascends to the surface. So we want that the ends of those tips to be a little bit shorter than what the body is. 
We want that to be right on top of the bug. When that gets wet, that's going to lay down on top of there. It's going to look, look real nice. The uh, legs of this bug are going to be Hungarian partridge. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie this in in a V style. So we're going to select a feather that's going to be close to the neck of the bird up on the skin, with a, still with a little bit of brown coloration to it. Gets that speckled um, leg parts to it. And we're looking for a, a feather that's really even in the tips, that's not got any broken hackle fibers in it. Um, and that's got a little bit of brown coloration to it. We're gonna take and prep this feather. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it by the tip and, and stroke away some of that fluff and uh, marabou towards the bottom of the feather. And we want it to be just where the barbs actually have some of that brown coloration. And then we're just gonna strip back the tip and take our scissors and nip that off. When we stroke that forward, what that's gonna do is leave us with a nice V. Now I have a little bit too much here, so I'll, uh, I'll preen back some of these and make them even so that we've got even parts on each side. And then I'll hold them at one side, give one loose wrap. Get this out of the way here. One loose wrap on top of those hackle fibers. And then one tighter one and pull it towards me a little bit. And that's going to splay those those legs out. And you can kind of manipulate them with your fingers a little bit after that. But when I'm ideally on the side of the hook, going down that body. And then we're just going to fold that over the top and do the same thing on the other side. Makes it a really easy way to get the same amount of legs on each side and be able to control them a little better since they're still on the stem. We'll cut those butt ends off. You can see that we already have a nice buggy profile and buggy appearance to this caddis pupa. A lot of legs and wing parts kind of coming out of here and that nice fluorescent green that's going to show through the underbody. The front part of this fly is going to add some translucence as well as some of that emerging properties coming out of the, the bug, and we're going to do it in a dubbing loop. Just a little small dubbing loop. Take our tool and hook it to our thread. We're going to use an SLF dubbing. Uh, this is a Whitlock Sandy Gray. This is a great little dubbing because uh, it's, it's got some gray in it, it's got some flash in it, and it's also got some, some olive fibers in it. So we'll take a little bit of that, and we're just going to kind of massage that and kind of try to align some of those fibers by taking the, the ends of them and aligning those fibers up. This is going to make our dubbing loop um, clumpy, nice and even, so that it's consistent around the hook. We don't want a whole lot, just enough to do maybe, maybe a wrap to a wrap and a half. Maybe two if we're wanting it a little bit more. We're going to put that in there and then we'll just take our fingers and kind of spread it out a little bit. Try to keep it nice and even. When you feel like you got it where you need it, we'll go ahead and spin this up. Doesn't need to be real tight, just enough to hold it. And we'll go ahead and take our, uh, our pick brush and we'll comb out some of those fibers. Toothbrush works really well for this as well. Um, this is Ritz Pick and Brush. 
but just looking to get some of those fibers out of there. Try to keep it nice and even down the, the dubbing loop. This will give a nice veil and buggy appearance to it. So we'll stroke back some of those fibers and like I said we're not looking for more than about one to two wraps of this. Oh, I popped my thread there, it's, but I can save it. Good thing with those hackle pliers that we just used. I'll just grab the end of this dubbing loop just to tie it off. I was already done. Go ahead and tie that dubbing loop off towards the head. And clip off the remaining thread. couple security wraps. The last part of this is going to be some antenna. And this is a light olive crystal flash. What we're going to do is we're just going to fold it around our thread. And we're going to tie these in. If this were a clock, we'd look at it at about 10 and 2 or 11 and 1, just on the top half of that fly and protruding towards the back. Cinch those down, put a little bit of a brown collar on there. It just helps to kind of transition into the head. Then we'll cut those just a little bit longer than what the rest of those fibers are. We'll go ahead and whip finish the fly. Tighten it up, clip it off, and that is the twisted caddis. Kind of take your uh, brush, kind of get those fibers picked out, makes it nice and buggy. And that's a great little caddis pupa. Um, you can nymph it, you can swing it, um, real effective. Also effective in tan and uh, kind of an orangish brown. Um, so that's Chris's Twisted Caddis. It's available on RockyMountainFlyDesign.com or you can tie up your own. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it.